Shooting events continue to shatter communities. Demands for gun control continue to be met with resistance, mostly by Republicans. In Kentucky, the Republican-controlled legislature did push a bill through last month that prohibits any federal firearms ban from being enforced in that state, illustrating, again, the deep divide on any potential solutions to the gun violence epidemic in our country. Democratic Kentucky State Senator Gerald Neal, whose district includes part of Louisville, is joining us live this morning to talk about uh, where we are. What is stri striking, if these mass shootings can still be striking, uh, in this country is that just like in the Nashville school shooting just two weeks ago, the governor of the state where it happened lost a personal friend in the tragedy. Let's also forget the mayor of Louisville himself was the target of a shooting uh, in his office uh, back in 2021. Do you think that once political leaders themselves are the victims or near victims of these kinds of uh, violent events or that they lose friends and family in these kind of events. Does that move the needle here at all? Or are we just going to follow the familiar script and at the end of the day, nothing changes? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. And uh, of course, the community is uh, in shock. This has been very traumatic. It will go on for time and there'll be periods to recover individually uh, and collectively. Uh, let me say uh, directly in response to your question, the people that you indicated that were close friends to individuals there, such as Tommy Elliott, who unfortunately lost his life, was a friend of mine as well. And the fact of the matter is those are not the individuals that are not opening up the discussion to see what we need to do further uh, in order to rein in gun balance. In fact, they want to see uh, some active and effective uh, policy develop. Uh, but those who are particularly on the state level in this particular instance uh, are resistant to that. And you just indicated one of the reasons are uh, that you <laughs> there's, there's not a lot of reason for hope in this particular area for some people, although I remain uh, optimistic uh, perennially. But the fact of the matter is, is just look at that. They not only passed that last session, they, they passed a constitutional carry permit. I mean, anybody can carry a gun concealed. Um, uh, under their clothing, with respect, without any training, without any prescription for anything. Think about that just for a moment. Think about that. It encourages the carrying of guns, quite frankly. And not only that, it even encourages those who would uh, display guns in open uh, fashion. Uh, let me say, that was always the law, at least as far as I can recall, in Kentucky. But now you find people walking around with guns like on the holsters, like it's the wild, wild west in it. Kroger store or somewhere else right. you might. And sir, so, I, don't, I don't want to interrupt you, but I, I also want to point out that hours after the shooting at the bank, there was another, a second unrelated shooting at a community college in Louisville, less than two miles from that bank. One person killed, one person hurt. Just to illustrate your point, continue. Exactly. And, and the point is, the point is, is that this is not obviously an easy question given our history, uh, given our association and, and, and our uh, desire to have firearms, even those that are of mass destruction, which baffles me. But the fact of the matter is, is that we have a long way to go in Kentucky, but this must be continued. We must fight for this. I mean, we're derelict in our duties. We're remiss in, in all kinds of ways that I can't even express if we do not continue uh, to reach out to our, our fellow legislators and others that we must rein this in. We have a responsibility to save lives. We know that statistically, when you have excess and availability of guns the way we are, the way we have, is that you're gonna have an increase in deaths uh, similar to the ones that we've experienced uh, here in, in Louisville. So it's not like this is something new. I mean, this happens every day. Uh, if you look across the country, it happens in every major community and guess what? Rural communities as well. So this is nothing that's going to go away. We're going to have to face up to it, and we're going to have to deal with it. Yeah, and, and Senator Neal, I'm, I'm so sorry for your loss in this situation as well. I imagine it just it's so difficult to deal with your own grief as well as uh, helping your community get through it. So you were, you were mentioning reigning gun control in. How do you do that at this point? Republicans do have a supermajority in the legislature. So legislature. So. What do you hope? What are what are your plans now moving forward? Or what do you hope people, uh, other lawmakers, do following this latest situation? Well, two things. One 
is that because of the odds and the way history has advised us as to what the response may be, that should not dampen. In fact, it should increase our energy and our focus on trying to persuade and or get others to uh, change policy in this regard. We must continue to fight is what that means. But the other is this, is that I believe that uh, some of these events who can uh, closely hit home, that uh, people have to evaluate this in their minds. These same individuals that vote for this type of legislation, which I think is antithetical to the safety of the community, are going to have to evaluate this. And I think the populace, which the majority of whom believe in reasonable gun control, will eventually require if we keep this on the table. And as these events continue, heaven forbid, the fact of the matter is, is that they're going to have to face uh, the opinion of the community at some point. So we must keep up that fight. We must keep this on the table and we should uh, do it with resolve. Let me just tick through a little bit about gun laws in Kentucky. It's one of 26 states that allow for a permitless carry of firearms for eligible adults. Law passed in 2019 that removed the provisions that mandated gun owners pass a background check if they were going to conceal carry their weapon. Under the law, most adults over 21 can purchase and carry a firearm and take them to most places in the state without a license. There are no Kentucky laws that prohibit gun purchases to state residents with mental health disorders, violent misdemeanor convictions, domestic abuse related restraining orders, or anyone with substance abuse disorders as well. The state ranks 13th in the U.S. for firearm mortality. Lawmakers continue to push for looser restrictions. Mitch McConnell, your senator, has got $1.2 million in funding from the NRA throughout his powerful political career. And now Republicans in the NRA are backing a bill that would ban gun-free zones at colleges and universities. I hear what you're saying about the fight, but in Kentucky, with a pro-gun rights record like that, uh, it's pretty much done and done, and done in that state and in other many uh, in other red states as well. And even though we see these shootings in blue states because of the sheer number of guns in this country, three to 400 million of them, um, you live in a gun right state and that is not gonna change even with what we saw yesterday. I understand hope, but what about action? Well, let me, let me just say this to you. Uh, I'm not talking about hope. I'm talking about responsibility. I'm talking about what we have to do. Regardless of the odds, we must fight for common sense gun control uh, laws. There's no question about that. So the responsibility of that, uh, from my pers perspective, is being addressed in others who fight for that. Uh, those who do not hear that, I think history will not only speak to that, but I also think that over time that this will reach the ears. I think the populace is the, uh, the voting uh, masses are the answer to this. So the question is, where do they want to take this? And I think we got to keep it on the table. So you have to fight for what you think is right. And you have to sustain that fight in order to bring about change. So that's where we are. I think your observation is absolutely correct. The history that you just indicated is correct. The status of where we are in Kentucky is absolutely correct. But guess what? You cannot make change by taking a position that you can't make change. You have to make change by fighting for it. And that's what we're going to do. And the resolve is even stronger today. All right, Kentucky State Senator Gerald Neal, thank you so much for being here. And again, uh, so sorry for what you're now dealing with, you, uh, your family, your friends, and your community. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And stay with Morning Rush as we continue to monitor the updates from Louisville and the efforts to honor those five lives cut short. You see them all there at the hands of an armed attacker.